So how do we measure the pressure of the atmosphere? The pressure of the atmosphere is like basically those gas particles that have a lot of kinetic energy banging against things. Well, we use a device called a barometer. And the two types of barometers I want you to know are the mercury barometer and the aneroid barometer. So um, try to, next to the mercury barometer, I'm going to go ahead and put the word messy. Okay, and maybe you'll see what I mean by messy. Honestly, it's not a real practical instrument to carry around. Mercury barometers, um, the, the element mercury under normal um, uh, earth conditions of temperature and pressure is a liquid. So, okay. Um, aneroid barometer are practical. And there's a good chance that you have a device in your home that basically has, shows pressure. Um, atmospheric pressure, and it's this sort of aneroid barometer. Um, so this is a mercury barometer, and the way mercury barometers work is there is liquid Hg, that's the symbol for mercury down here, and basically it relies on the atmospheric pressure bouncing in all directions, one of the directions is down, basically pounding on that open um, to a certain extent, open liquid mercury. And then, um, depending upon the pressure, the mercury, the, the, I don't know if you can see this glass column right here. Okay. This is a glass column that is closed up here and is open down here. Okay. So the mercury can kind of ebb and flow in that glass column. So the greater the pressure, the more that liquid mercury is, is shoved up. And so then basically, it's the, high, the, the more the pressure, the, um, the higher the mercury rises. So I guess I should put up my slides here. So um, honestly, if, you, uh, if the weather person is giving you the barometric pressure, the pressure, or the atmospheric pressure, they probably will give you it in terms of inches. And what they're talking about is inches of mercury. Um, and this is the device they're referring to. Um, so there you go. Not quite practical. And this is an aneroid barometer, and you might have one of these actually in your home. And as you can see from the slide, the aneroid barometer um, is just kind of slightly flexible to, and, and, and picks up, I think it's kind of neat, it picks up actually small um, changes in the pressure of the atmosphere. I just think that is really neat. And then relative to its flexing, the dial inside will coil or uncoil. And then it will move this black. This, is, this will move. The black one, move with pressure. And by pressure, I mean atmospheric pressure. Um, so uh, there you go. And all this sort of uh, aneroid barometer also oftentimes will have a, I don't know if you can see, there's this gold one in here. This one right here. And actually, that's one that you set. So um, basically, what somebody did a while back, you know, I can, from this figure anyway, is they, the, the pressure for a particular day was up here. Their black dial was up there. So they turned the gold dial there. Okay, so you can move this. You move this. And then a few days later, or hours later, I'm not sure, but basically you can see that the pressure went up. And so basically, you, from the difference between what you move and the, what it is now, you can get what we call tendency. And if you are tendency, and we'll be talking more about tendency, but the tendency here basically is that the pressure was rising. And rising pressure, generally you're going to have clearing skies, no precipitation. If the barometric pressure is falling, then you can generally um, imagine you're going to have some sort of cloud formation and maybe even precipitation. So that's tendency and more on that, but that's an aneroid barometer.